joined the Lakers. And after the game, LeBron was asked to describe his mindset as the Lakers try and make a playoff push. Desperation. I mean, uh, got a four-game losing streak. Obviously, our season been up and down, but uh, I would say desperation and inspiring. We playing inspired basketball uh, versus a really good team. And we needed this win for sure. Right now, I don't give a damn about the 56. I'm just happy we got a win. I, I'm, that's just literally the first thing that came to my mind. Um, you know, and we needed, you know, pretty much all of them. All right, so Jalen Rose here with us now. And so the Lakers snap a four-game losing streak. Maybe your opinion has changed now about the Lake show after what LeBron James did on Saturday night. Good morning. Here's how I feel about the Lakers, right? When you have LeBron James and his potential to have a, a night like he had the other night, 56 points and 10 rebounds, by the way, against the Golden State Warriors team who has been recently reeling, and you have the potential of Anthony Davis returning. He's a top-10 player when he's healthy. Legs, correct me if I'm wrong. If the Lakers go into a series, say, for example, against the Memphis Grizzlies, I feel like they'll have two of the best three players in the series, which means it's going to be a long series. So, therefore, for the Lakers, all you got to do is stay the course, ride LeBron James, hope you can get some quality minutes from Russell Westbrook and the rest of the guys, Malik Monk in particular, and then see if you can get AD back Force your way into a play-in, and all of a sudden you get a chance to play against a squad like Memphis, who's a young playoff team. They will be. And obviously the Golden State Warriors, depending on their health with Draymond Green and the productivity of Klay Thompson. Yeah, Jalen, I agree that if, if you get Memphis, I think you've got a shot. Like, I'm just not that I don't believe in them, but they're a very young team going through it with those kind of expectations for the first time in the postseason against a Lakers team who at that point would have – gotten into the play-in, survived the play-in, had more games under the belt with Anthony Davis, and as you said, now you've got two legitimate stars to play against in that series. But I don't think they're beating a Golden State team that I think is about 60% of what they could be when they get all their guys back and Klay Thompson at some point finds his rhythm, which we know he will, or even the Phoenix Suns getting a healthy Chris Paul back. So I think the best case for the Lakers is you, you survive the play-in and you lose in the first round in probably six games to either of Phoenix or Golden State or potentially have, have even a longer series against Memphis and maybe even survive that series. But I just don't look at them and say, this is a legitimate threat to win it all. And the main reason for me, I just don't think they're good enough defensively, even when you get Anthony Davis back. I just don't think this is a team that instills fear in anybody on that end of the floor. And I hope John Morant's listening to you too. Just doubt the Grizzlies left and right. Uh, all right, let's go. Shay, Shay, throwing, throwing flavors, flamethrowers at me. What the heck is that about? I love you it. and Jalen. Hype it up. Uh, Jalen, let's talk about Russell Westbrook because he had 20 on Saturday, right? To go along with what LeBron James did. Maybe if they found a recipe for success with Westbrook? I don't think so. I think when Anthony Davis is out, you get a chance to play what we call junk lineups. LeBron James playing the five, Russell Westbrook can kind of just be out there, not necessarily being the primary ball handler. When Russell Westbrook is at his best, he needs the basketball, and he needs to dominate the basketball. That allows him to get a rhythm to play at his maximum. When LeBron James has the basketball, that means Russ is off the ball. He's not a spot-up shooter. He's not going to do much cutting, and so he can't be as effective. His game has to be energy, and we're talking about the top teams in the West. Let me tell you what they actually really need from Russ. Defense at the point of attack. The top teams in the West have the backcourt of CP3 and Devin Booker in Phoenix. You have the Splash Brothers and the Golden State Warriors, and you just mentioned Ja Morant. So if you're going to be the Lakers and you're finding yourselves in positions to try to play in, to try to advance in the playoffs, you have to play better defensively. That also is something that falls on Russell Westbrook. Yeah, listen, Russell Westbrook, and Jalen, you mentioned it, he's never been a guy that's a, a high-efficiency shooter. He's a better shooter when he's got the ball in his hands the entire game, the way that he did basically his entire career. So this is a different lane for him. And as a result, when you don't play free of mind that you can just go attack, a guy that's not a pure shooter, now it's going to be very difficult to ever find that rhythm. So I think if they stagger the minutes, he's got a better chance to be effective. I think defensively they're clearly going to have issues. And I think 
what LeBron James did on Saturday, and Jalen, you and I were both in the building, and it was phenomenal. It was a vintage moment. It was roll back the clock. Man, that was fun. But let's not get caught up in the fact that he took 31 <laughs> shots. He took 11 threes. <laughs> yeah. It's like when you open that Preach. drawer, right, and you find that T-shirt that you love so much, and it was, it was hidden in the bottom of the drawer, and you put it on, and you wore that shirt, and it felt so good that day. You wore it the next day. At some point, it's going back in a hamper, and you're going to have to go wash it again. And I think that's what it is for the Lakers. That's not sustainable to play that kind of way and expect LeBron James to play like that offensively to carry this team. Now, let's see what happens when AD gets back and we'll have a better definitive conclusion. But it's, hard. it's, a, it's a reach for me right now to think they're going to go from this to a team that could potentially make a run at the finals. Okay, so maybe LeBron James picked up the phone and called Jason Tatum and said, I dropped 56, what can you do on Sunday? And then he went and did that, and it resulted in a Nets law. Thank you for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.